I'm Roger Mills and I'm here with Debbie Slocum from Slocum Ridge Pet Camp and today we're going to be expanding on some of the things that you're going to find on her website that are about uh, puppy 101, uh, full grown dogs, about grooming, boarding and etc. And today we're going to be talking about, uh, obviously we're outside and it's sunny, but it's been cold and wet and we want to talk about of course spring fitness. Things you can do with your pet and should be doing with your pet. Well, Debbie, I'm going to let you start in and tell us what, what we need to be doing now and going into the spring and summer. Okay, as the weather's getting better, uh, we're going to be able to get outside a lot more. We've been inside a good bit. Our pets have been inside. Uh, they probably packed on a few more pounds because most likely, even though your pet's activity slowed down back when it got cold, you probably didn't slow down on the feeding like you should have. So, uh, like the rest of us, right, right. Just like we ate too much during the holidays and we're all trying to lose weight too. So now while you're working on yourself and the weather's getting nice, it's time to get into a fitness plan for your dog. Okay. Cause he needs it. Uh, first thing you need to do, uh, is determine whether or not your dog is overweight or if he just needs to get, you know, put on, uh, get some muscles built up or whatever. Uh, if he's overweight, uh, the best way to find out probably is check with your groomer, your, uh, your vet, your breeder, somebody that, that knows what that dog should look like and what kind of weight it should carry. Um, you can feel, uh, get, get an accurate weight somewhere, somebody that has a pet scale. Your veterinarian usually does, your groomer may, your boarding kennel may. Uh, just get an accurate weight on your dog uh, and, key, and monitor that. Uh, feel the ribs. Feel the dog's ribs. You should be, you, you should not, you, you should be able to find them for sure. <laughs> uh, you, you actually should be able to, on a short-haired dog, you actually should be able to see them. You shouldn't be, you know, they shouldn't be emaciated where the, all you see is skeleton, but you should be able to actually see the ribs. You certainly should be able to feel them. Um, once you've determined whether or not you need to lose weight or you just need to put on some muscle, then you can adjust feeding accordingly as well. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, if you're going to start an exercise program, you need to check the feet and nails. Way too many of us, our dog's nails get overgrown. If the nails are overgrown, they're going to hold the foot up off the floor and they're, it's going to walk on that back pad and they're not going to walk with their foot flat on the floor when they, when they make their stride because it hurts. Those nails are never going to let those pad, those uh, front pads, toe pads, touch the floor the way they should. It's going to cause all kind of anatomical issues. So you need to work on the nails, check the nails. If the nails are too long, then you have two choices. You can cut them way back into the quick, which is not fun for you or the dog or anybody else, or you can put them on a schedule of getting them trimmed back as close to the quick as possible every week to two weeks until you get them back. If you trim them back right to the quick, they're going to recede. The quick is going to recede a little bit and next week you can get a little bit more off and next week you can get a little bit more off. Uh, but if you're not consistent with it, you're not going to get those nails back. Yes, and as a pet owner, I'm going to recommend that you do take them to a vet or to a groomer. I've had experience with that, thinking that I was cutting them back and because you can't always tell as a dog owner exactly how far back that is if they look a little overgrown and not only do you hurt them but they're likely to hurt you after you hurt them <laughs> so yeah yeah take it, to, to do it. take it to somebody that knows what they're doing but get yes. those nails back yes. uh next thing you want to do is make sure you've got a proper lead and collar or harness so that you can get them out and walk them safely and they're not going to slip out of their collar um uh, Update your ID tags. It's a good time to do that. Make sure they're wearing good ID tags. And of course, make sure their vaccinations are updated and they're wearing those tags as well. Uh, set up a schedule. Uh, 20 minutes a day, a couple of times a day, uh, 20 minutes at a time, a couple of times a day is a, a, a good minimum. Uh, you want to get the heart rate up on the dog, just like you want to get your own heart rate up to get your fitness level up. Uh, you can take them to a public park. You can take them to uh, walk them through the neighborhood. Uh, if you have a fenced yard, you can get out and throw a ball, throw a frisbee. Uh, you can take them to a jogging track and jog with them, walk with them, whatever. Make sure if you take them out, take your pickup bags. You want to make sure that you clean up after your dog when you take them out in public. Be, be responsible. Um, but that's that's basically the you know the gist. We we need to get out, get these dogs moving, get them some exercise and get some weight off of them. Yes, 
You know, there's a place uh, recently that the uh, the city worked on at Nahalula Falls. There's a couple of miles of walking tracks, natural walking tracks up there that have a lot of woods and so forth. It's a great place for that's you and your family and your and your pets to that, go. That's a good idea. And then there's the uh, uh, park behind the mall. Yes. That's a good yeah. place as well. That's the uh, Jim Martin uh, right. area back there. Right, I can think of the name of it. And let's do this, let's uh, get into the grooming side because a lot of people, kind of like the weight issue, They've been in and out of the house. They, they're probably not as clean as you would like them to be. What's my steps there? Okay, well, a lot of people tend to not get them groomed or get the hair left longer during the winter months, uh, which is okay if you're maintaining that coat. But if you're not brushing like you should, that ends up being a problem this time of the year. Uh, if your dog has grown a longer coat over the winter, then you need to make sure that you get them to a groomer before the mats that they're starting to form get too tight. They get too tight, there's not going to be but one choice, and that is a smoothie. We're going to shave them right down because that's all we can do. Uh, if they're starting to get tangled, don't bathe them first. Do not bathe them first. Bring them to your groomer. Let your groomer bathe them because if you bathe them, you're going to make those mats get a whole lot tighter, and then we're back to the smoothie again. So we want to make sure that we're doing, we're, you know, that you get somebody that knows what they're doing, doing that bath and brushing those tangles out before it gets too bad. Um, if you must have a smoothie, if you let your dog get out of shape and that's all, all you, we can do, ask your groomer to go over how you can prevent that next year. Because there are things you can do. You can let your dog grow a longer coat and prevent it from getting to the point they have to be shaved down in the, su you know, in the summer. Um, and if you do have to have a smoothie, uh, consider something creative. Uh, we have a lot of cute new creative things that we can do. Some little bling for the short coat, uh, some little creative designs, some color if you like, some temporary color if you're not sure you want to commit to something. Uh, but ask about, ask about that. Uh, double coated breeds. They, your double coated breeds are going to be like your golden retrievers, Pomeranians, uh, Labrador retrievers, uh, Dogs that have a, an under, you know, your Huskies, dogs that have an undercoat that they grow a lot thicker for the winter and then they need to get rid of that coat in the summer. Uh, that, you, you don't want to shave those dogs. That when you shave those dogs, that outer hard coat is a lifetime coat. They only have so much of it they can grow in a lifetime. You do not want to cut that off. You want to comb out, brush out the undercoat. A good bath helps turn that loose. And if you're not prepared to do that at home, your groomer is set up to give them a good bath, uh, get rid of most all of that undercoat, and uh, it ends up on our floor, not on your couch. So you want to you want to do that, and then it helps the dog be cooler because the undercoat's gone. That was his insulation that kept him warm for the winter. Hmm. So if you, it's almost like a dethatching for your yard, I guess. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that works. Never, never would have thought. I, you know. I've had Labradors in the past, and I know I brought my two labs to you to uh, to do that with, and I was very much amazed at the amount of hair that came off the dogs. Mm -hmm. and they looked like half the dog. Right. And I know right. they had to have felt better. You'd be surprised when you do it, even on some of the short-haired dogs, like a, uh, I'll say a Jack Russell Terrier, you can uh, de-shed that dog, and you'll have a pile of hair that's bigger than the dog. Bigger than the dog. So uh, you, you'd wow. be amazed how much you get out. So coming into spring and summer, keep your dogs cool. If there are a larger breed, uh, contact a, a good groomer, a certified groomers uh, that know what they're doing. Get your dog dethatched, if you will, or smoothied <laughs> if they need that. Uh, and if you're looking for a little bling for your pup, uh, that's obviously a thing of the future that's coming that a lot of doggies like to have, and of course their parents as well. So contact uh, Debbie Slocum at Slocum Ridge Pet Camp, and she can give you the rest. Thanks for being with us.